Tens of thousands of dollars stolen in an apparent scam. Desperate refunds being denied. Accusations of fraud, secret layoffs, and whistleblowers making anonymous posts inciting the collapse of an entire company. Welcome to Kickstarter, but this time it just got worse. There is a huge collapse happening in Kickstarter and miniature tabletop gaming right now, and it is affecting thousands of people, and there's a lot of money on the line. And this story is still developing as I speak. I've been following this for a few months, and we're reaching the apex, the climax of what's going on, so I figured that now is the time to shine a spotlight on this massive scandal. This has taken tons of research and sifting through details, so you know, subscribe to the channel if you like to see more content like this. So, this is Broken Anvil Miniatures. They're a pretty big company in the mini wargaming and tabletop space. I first heard about them because lots of my friends and fellow content creators were being sponsored by them to show off their products in videos and podcasts a few years ago. And you've probably heard of them too, most likely because of their very first big game, the one that brought them to mine and a lot of other people's attention. Rivenstone. That's right, the miniature war game Rivenstone. It was first announced in April 2022 and it received a ton of press and hype. This was a massive game that people were really excited about and for good reason. Reports from those who played the game were really positive. The miniatures for the game looked really good, content creators were painting them and showing them off in videos, and the game looked really interesting, really solid. And the game itself was revealed alongside a massive Kickstarter campaign that was very professional, showing off a whole host of great healthy signs for a campaign, from pictures of miniatures to gorgeous concept art for future content. So before the rise of AI art then, and it also had a very cool World of Warcraft vibe to it. And if I may be an art snob for early 2000s era video game art for a second, it was extremely Samwise Didier in its sensibilities. See, told you it wasn't a wasted degree mom. But overall, Rivenstone was just a refreshing take on miniature wargaming that managed to grab the zeitgeist of the time. Yes, a time ghost. And this video is about to get a lot spookier. And as a result of all this, the Kickstarter for the game was super successful. It reached more than twice its original goal. Broken Anvil Miniatures wanted $100,000 to launch the game, but they got $233,000. Now, how can you be disappointed in a number like that? Personally, I didn't pledge to the campaign. I just thought the miniatures were way too expensive for what they were offering. It was like $99 for 15 miniatures, which is, I mean, well, I suppose it's not much more expensive than Games Workshop, but that's not the most reasonable place to be in the world. And I was suspicious of the pictures of the miniatures. They looked a little bit edited in post-processing, and that made me a bit wary. But I have lots of friends who did pledge to the game and were looking forward to playing it. And I have to admit, even I was attempted to buy in too. And from the outside, everything looked rosy from there. The miniatures themselves were seal cast miniatures. This is a material that has a specific manufacturing process and it was really novel at the time, like wearing an onion on your belt. But to allay any fears of these miniatures being inferior to more traditional plastics, resins, or sweet, delicious lead, Broken Anvil sent miniatures out to content creators to show them off in videos and demonstrate that yeah, there is a real product here, the minis are real, they're being sculpted, and they're fun to handle, like a brand new bull <laughs> though, and things were moving along fine for the big release of the game, scheduled for May the 2nd, 2023. Oh, oh no, that's a problem. See, for those who are watching this video far in the future, first of all, why didn't you stop the December 17th incident? I will never buy before Krull. But aside from that, I've made this video in September of 2023, and as of recording, Rivenstone has not yet been released to the public. Suffice to say, the original May release date was missed by Broken Anvil. But that's not super unusual for a Kickstarter. Often games and campaigns are late, especially considering the impact of COVID over the last few years. This could just be a delay. Spoilers, it's a lot worse. See, after the successful campaign of Rivenstone, Broken Anvil decided to start another campaign, this time for a product called Forged, a massive miniature collection. This was launched in November of 2022, and again, it was a massive runaway success. 
Plus. They offered 134 miniatures for only $120, which, I mean, do I need to say this? It's a really good deal. Much better than Rivenstone. And this was a super successful campaign as a result, making $243,000 from 1,857 backers, breaking way past their original $50,000 goal. Pretty swell, right? And this was all looking good until you'll never believe it. A few months later, after having not yet delivered either of those two original Kickstarters, Broken Anvil Miniatures created a third Kickstarter in May 2023. This was for a paint line, the Broken Anvil Studio Paint, and this got a thousand backers for it, leading to $144,000. Again, a whole lot of money. So for those keeping count, by May of 2023, we've got three Kickstarters, a miniature war game, a whole heap of miniatures, and an entire paint range, all of them making hundreds of thousands of dollars, collectively around $600,000. And what we have to show for it is nada, zilch, zip, nothing. And as you can imagine, by May of 2023, the backers of the very first Kickstarter, Rivenstone, were getting a little worried. And all of 2023 was filled with drama for the Broken Anvil community. A lot of stuff happened in a short period of time. Chris, the owner of Broken Anvil, was constantly getting into fights with customers on Discord. People were trying to find out what was going on behind the scenes. Comments amongst users on Kickstarter were getting terse, and the community wanted answers. And it now turns out that they had very good reasons to be worried. Because at the end of August, an anonymous poster claiming to be an ex-employee of of Broken Anvil Miniatures has now come forward on the very famous Daka Daka forums to reveal everything that has allegedly been going on behind the scenes of Broken Anvil. And it is absolutely horrendous and horrifying for anyone ever thinking about backing a Kickstarter project. This is a huge cautionary tale. So what happened? Well, according to this source, it turns out that Rivenstone had been successfully funded in that original campaign in 2022, and Broken Anvil did have enough money. But the success of this campaign apparently fueled an unsustainable amount of growth for the company, and Broken Anvil took on a load of new employees, and they rented offices, and as a result, Broken Anvil started to lose cash fast. Uh-oh. And according to the source, they lost so much money so fast that Chris, the owner of Broken Anvil Miniatures, desperately created the second Kickstarter for Forged as one of the most desperate Hail Marys I have ever heard of in my history of being involved in the tabletop industry. If what this source says is true, it's absolutely wild. Because apparently, the goal of Forged from Chris, the owner of Broken Anvil Miniatures, was one massive gambit to catch lightning and produce a Kickstarter campaign that would pull in the same amount of money that Reaper miniature Kickstarters pull in. In other words, the only way for Forged to be a successful Kickstarter was to rescue Broken Anvil from the abyss, to receive enough money pledged to it that they could pay for all of their increased expenses, the previous Rivenstone campaign, and the forged one. And to do that, the campaign needed to pull in over a million dollars. His goal was to ape Reaper miniatures. Now, in theory, this could maybe be possible. Reaper routinely pull in millions of dollars with their Kickstarter campaigns, especially the dozen or so Bones campaigns that they have done over the years. Quiet in the back so juvenile. These are huge campaigns promising hundreds of high quality miniatures for really cheap prices. And they're designed for role playing games and they are huge tentpole affairs and they are indeed able to raise millions of dollars for Reaper. And apparently this is what Forged was designed to also do. And the idea that Broken Anvil were trying to replicate the success of Reaper Bones does make a little bit of sense, considering that both campaigns for Forged and also for Reaper Bones are focused on value and bang for buck. You can see how they were trying to kind of tie into the same audience in the marketing. Though, it must be said that the Reaper campaigns are long established and they're filled with new miniatures entirely that have not been seen before. Whereas the Forged campaign that Broken Anvil did was was mostly just physical versions of miniatures that they had already created and sold as digital STL files on their Patreon and my mini factory previously. Yeah. Still, Chris apparently hoped that it would rake in a similar amount to Reaper, and the last Reaper campaign pulled in nearly $2 million, and the one before 
before that pulled in 3 million. So what a disappointment for Chris then, when Forged only got a comparatively few $243,000. Not enough to save Rivenstone or Broken Anvil or even Forged. His desperate gambit was a loss. It seems to have blown up in his face. And according to this source, apparently nothing for Forged has been done since the campaign ended, besides the SDL files for the miniatures that had already been created. And apparently all the money generated by Forged has already been spent and is gone now. And yet still, those miniatures have not been released physically. So yeah, that's really, really bad. But okay, what about the third Kickstarter? What about the Studio Paint one? Well, according to this source, the Studio Paint Kickstarter Kickstarter was originally created because Chris needed to generate more money to delay the bankruptcy of Broken Anvil. So it looks like there's no chance of that Kickstarter ever happening either. And it goes without saying that none of this was good for the employees at Broken Anvil. And according to this source, they were all laid off in May of this year. They were fired. And that is something that I can kind of strangely confirm. Remarkably, I have a friend that was in the process of being hired by Broken Anvil Miniatures in May of 2023. And in the middle of the hiring process, the person who was conducting their interviews was themselves fired and let go. So yeah, this, this timeline, unfortunately, all seems to sync up. Now, the source in this thread mentions that throughout 2023, Chris was apparently trying to sell Broken Anvil to another company, and with hindsight, it now looks like each of these Kickstarters appear to have been designed to pay for the previous Kickstarter, and this was all part of a gambit to impress the bigger company and fool them into buying this quickly collapsing house of cards known as Broken Anvil Miniatures. Is this what they call a pump and dump? I think this is a pump and dump, right? I don't know. This sounds like a pump and dump. That can also mean another thing, but we're not getting into that. But the story doesn't end here because this potential seal is something that Chris acknowledges in an update post that they posted on the Kickstarter entitled Current Business Status. And this coincidentally just happened to arrive a few days after this alleged ex-employee expose. Very convenient timing, it must be said. So in this August update, Chris on behalf of Broken Anvil Miniatures confirms that throughout 2023, they were attempting to sell the company to another group, but that the deal fell through in July of 2023. In this update post, Chris tries to blame the potential buyers as the reason for the collapse of Broken Anvil, but it is painfully clear that it was Broken Anvil that had issues because, I mean, he says that, quote, ultimately, despite our best efforts to preserve what my team and I had built together, we suddenly find ourselves in a worse position than we started in, in part due to the complicated nature of the early merging process. Yeah, right, I'm sure none of this has anything to do with the previous years of apparent mismanagement. But even if any of this statement is true from Chris, why was none of this communicated in the risks and challenges section of the various Kickstarters? Because yes, there is a space on Kickstarter where a company can lay out for potential backers all the possible foreseeable problems that the campaign could face. If we take Chris at his word, he was planning on this sale from January of this year, well before the paint Kickstarter was created, the third one that they made. And this is absolutely something that had a bearing on that campaign and should have been laid out in that section of the Kickstarter. But the only risk to the project and to getting those paints into the hands of backers that Broken Anvil were willing to admit was extreme heat or extreme cold to the physical paints in transit. That was their big concern, apparently. Very literal risks there. No mention of money problems, no mention of a seal going through, just watch out for Mr. Freeze. But of course, the risk of insolvency wouldn't be laid out in this section because that would have scared away potential backers. And so Broken Anvil chose to not inform anyone about this. And this is something that we all need to be wary about when it comes to Kickstarters. They're not going to tell people the whole truth. The goal of these things is to create the most successful crowdfunding campaign. That means get the most money. But then this all gets even worse. Because later in this update, Chris says that only himself and his partner are still working at Broken Anvil along with a few core members. He doesn't give any details on what they're going to do now, except to say that they're going to quote, brute force a way forward. And that means 
nothing. And then he has the audacity to say that while we wish we had more to freely share with our community, we are obligated not to disclose much information at this time. Which honestly, this statement has me just scratching my head. It sounds to me like they either have nothing up their sleeves or their big plan is to kidnap the royal family and hold them to ransom, which is a pretty grim plan to find oneself in. Honestly, this all reads as simply damage control and a desperate attempt to retain some amount of reputation in the industry shredded as it is. But worst of all, Chris then says that they will not be offering refunds to backers. Everyone is stuck with their money in limbo, presumably spent by Broken Anvil on who knows what. But hey, here's the real twist of the knife. You can still go to the Forged Kickstarter right now and pledge Give them your money. Well, that has not been closed. You can donate your cash to Oblivion. So much for the supposed moral imperative. Ultimately, at this stage, I'm very concerned for any backers of any of the Broken Anvil's Kickstarter products. This is seeming like a Kickstarter collapse of a company. I personally don't think that Forged or the Broken Anvil Studio Paint will get kickstarted. I think that the money for those is being used to potentially push out Rivenstone if there's any money left at all. And at this stage, I think maybe backers should be looking into something like chargebacks through their credit cards if possible. I'm not sure if you can do that. There's a movement to speak to the Washington DA though. Maybe Americans will find some relief there. There's organization and details of that in the comments of the Kickstarter. But otherwise, this is a really truly terrible story. A lot of people have been burned on this and it's a real cautionary tale that even when a company seems to be super professional, they look on the up and up, that's still not a guarantee that a Kickstarter with them will actually work out. There's no excuse for any of this. There update hasn't reassured anyone and now to make things worse they deleted all their platforms their discord their patreon is down the links on their website to those just goes to nowhere this is a nightmare and though a lot of this story is based on an anonymous tip-off, I will say I've investigated Broken Anvil Miniatures myself, or Level 52 Studios, which is their real name, and from what I've seen of their records, they consistently filed all of their statements late. And in fact, the company was even dissolved in 2020 for failing to file on time, and they had to be reinstated. Now, it's up to you dear viewer, to infer for yourself, if that means anything. But it does suggest to me personally that maybe things were being run a bit sloppy at that company. But you be the judge. Okay, massive updates to this story. And it has taken a direction that I did not see happening. This totally shocked me. So after I wrote and recorded this video, there was a bunch of huge Kickstarter updates on the various Broken Anvil Kickstarters by Chris. And they are massive. So firstly, for Rivenstone, there was a post consisting of pictures showing a whole ton of miniatures that Broken Anvil have apparently created and filed. There are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of pictures showing hundreds of miniatures. It actually feels almost passive aggressive, the amount of miniatures and pictures that have been posted up here. Now, this update is obviously great news for anyone who backed the Rivenstone Kickstarter. There are at least some miniatures made, I guess. However, I do want to raise a bit of a concern here. So these pictures show hundreds of miniatures, but actually that's not a lot. There's still a whole load more of miniatures that need to be casted and packaged in order to actually fulfill this Kickstarter. And on top of that, I mean, this is what, like months after the original end date? Is this seriously all the progress they have made for the Kickstarter? It was meant to already be in the hands of backers by now. And furthermore, what about all of the Kickstarter extras, the tokens, the measuring widgets, the cards, the books, there's still so much more to go than just these minis. And also, in a previous update to Rivenstone, it was mentioned that the bigger miniatures for the game would need to be 3D printed because they just couldn't be produced in CO cast, it turns out. So what about those? What's happening with those? Are they there? It doesn't look like it. And if there is no money left in Broken Anvil miniatures, how is any of this getting shipped anywhere? That's all going to cost money. There's still a lot of questions to be answered. There was also a huge update to the Studio P line showing a payment of $66,000 to who? 
Well, apparently it's the paint manufacturer, but the details have been redacted in the picture. Apparently the paints are now all paid for and the bottles are produced already and just awaiting pickup for shipment. And Chris claims that all of their paints will be well out before the end of the year to backers. Optimistically, they say November shipping and they will show pictures of the paints when they can, which honestly, I kind of find this shocking. I didn't see this coming. I thought that the project was dead. Though, I do have to wonder, where the hell did this money come from? And why wasn't this done already? Is this all it took? Why only now? Where was the budget found for this one just after the anonymous whistleblower released their statement? I have some very uncharitable opinions on where this money has come from and how it's been found, but for legal reasons, I probably shouldn't disclose them. As for Forged, well, it's not good news because there's been no update on Forged so far at least, and that means that it's it's likely that there'll probably be no update at all. This is still super skeezy, and honestly, regardless of whether Broken Anvil come out of this as a company that still exists, even if they somehow fulfill all of these Kickstarters, I suspect that their reputation has now been irrevocably ruined, and they'll never have another successful Kickstarter ever again after this huge scandal. And good, too. There's a whole lot of people that have been effectively scammed by this. But if there is a further big update to the story, you'll hear it here first. So subscribe to the channel. Thanks. But if you enjoyed this coverage and you want to see more deep dives like this, please check out my Patreon to support my work. You'll get exclusive videos like a review of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay this month, and you can even hang out with me and our friendly community on Discord at patreon.com slash Discord Miniatures. And a huge thanks to those who provided me with information that without it, I wouldn't have been able to make this video. You know who you are. Thank you so much. And of course, a big thanks to all of my patrons, especially CryptoKev, Novani, and Travis Hunter. Couldn't do this without you guys. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.